I saw a story this week on CNN about a minister in Gainesville, Florida, who has declared September 11th of this year Burn the Quran Day. Thank you for your reaction. That was mine. This guy is a minister at a non-denominal church called the Dove World Outreach Center. He said all kinds of disparaging, insulting, inaccurate things about Islam that I'm not going to repeat from this pulpit. His message is about hate and fear. And I can assure you, there is nothing in the Gospels, there is nothing in the teaching of Jesus Christ that says anything about burning the holy texts of other traditions. It is not there. The proposed burning of the Quran is obscene. It is not the work of peace. It is not the work of understanding. It is not the work of building bridges. It is insanity. Now, the good news is, there are a lot of groups, a lot of churches, even the National Association of Evangelicals, who are condemning this action and urging the church to cancel their event. A conversation about God demands grace, an openness, a willingness to learn, to have our own ideas challenged, our convictions questioned. These are the hallmarks of humility. When I was in seminary, I read from someone whose name is lost to me now, when you speak of God, your voice should shake a little. You know, Jesus had no time for religious know-it-alls. He saved some of his harshest criticism for church leaders, for the Pharisees, the religious leaders who were so certain about who was out and who was in, who was holy and unholy, clean and unclean. Jesus was forever taking all this religious certainty and turning it on its head. And we can only imagine what Jesus would have said about Pastor Terry Jones and his Burn the Koran campaign. I think he would say, this has got to stop. Followers of Islam believe that the Koran is a collection of revelations received by the Prophet Muhammad from God about 1400 years ago. They believe that Muhammad was the last of a series of prophets and teachers and messengers that included Adam, Moses, Jesus, Abraham, all names revered by us as well. The word Islam means peaceful surrender to the will of God. The Quran was written at a time when the Muslim people were being driven from their homes, persecuted, and killed. The Old Testament was written at a time when Jewish people were being driven from their homes, persecuted, and killed. And religious scholars will tell you that most holy scriptures have stories of war and violence in them. Throughout history, most faiths have used these texts to justify violence. And if there's anyone in this room at this moment who's thinking that I've got it wrong, after church today, pull out your Bible and look up Psalm 137. And you'll see that our own text has passages that can make us uncomfortable. But also, like the Bible, the predominant message of the Quran is of peace and care and loving God Justice, care for the neighbor, care for the stranger. In the Bible, we have thou shalt not kill. In the Quran, we have whoever kills another, surely he is killing all of humanity. And whoever saves the life of another, surely he saves the lives of all humanity. These are words of peace words of faith, words that could save the world if we would take them to heart. 
The second thing you could do the next time someone sends you one of those emails demonizing Islam, delete it. Don't forward it. Don't participate in the stereotyping. Don't give in to your fear. It's okay to be a little afraid. We all have those emotions. Just don't give in to it. Don't sign on for it. Don't focus on this tiny group of extremists who commit acts of violence. Focus on the hundreds of millions of Muslim people in the world who are people of faith, whose priorities and concerns and families are not so different from your own. And third, when you think of Muslim people, think of individuals. Think of the professor at Ohio State. Think of the engineer at Honda. Think of the teacher at the elementary school down the street. When you think of Muslim people, remember those who died on 9-11, not the hijackers. There was only a handful of them. Remember Mohammed Sunhami Hamandi. He was born in Pakistan. He came to the United States as a small child with his parents. He played high school football. He went to college. He became a part-time ambulance driver. He died, this Muslim young man on 9-11, trying to rescue people and save lives. When you think of Muslim people, remember Mohammed Salahuddin Cloudhuri. He was a waiter at Windows on the World, which was at the top of the World Trade Center. He died that day. His wife had their baby two days later. When you think of Muslim people, remember Rama Sali. She was a woman, 28 years old. Her neighbors described her as fun and outgoing and generous. And she died on American Airlines Flight 11, seven months pregnant with her first child. Remember the founder of the Islamic Circle of North America who worked in the World Trade Center and also died on September 11th. That same group now is giving away tens of thousands of copies of the Quran in response to the campaign about burning the Quran. In the language of their own tradition, they are spreading words of faith and peace and hope. One of the ladies at the 8.30 service this morning said to me after, maybe we should declare September 11th, buy a Koran and read some of it. It is for us to share our message of love and hope and peace, but let us do it with grace and respect and above all, humility. God grant us as individuals as a nation, as Christians, the humility for this work.